welcome to this special broadcast. I'm Tamanna Inamdar. Today, as we celebrate a major festival in different parts of India, the cultural reference, the style of celebration may change from different parts of the country, but the overarching theme and message is the same. We are essentially celebrating the triumph of good over evil. This festive period is also marked with the celebration of Durga Ma, um, the goddess Durga, uh, Nari Shakti, the power of women, and her own, goddess Durga's own triumph over evil. Today, as we speak on this, we also need to put our focus on Nari Shakti in real terms. Today, in 2022, are Indian women as empowered as they should be? Our laws are some of the best in the world. Uh, they upheld, uphold the rights of women. But in practice, do women get the same respect, the sense of safety, the opportunity as they need? To speak on some of these issues, to talk about how far we've come as women today in India and how far we need to go, I'm joined now by Ranjana Kumari, director of CSR India, Advaita Kala, author, is joining us on the show. Dr. Zeenat Shaukat Ali, activist and scholar, joining us today. And I'm also speaking with Bhavna Ramana, actor and activist. Welcome to all of you. And thank you so much for speaking with us today on the show. Uh, Ranjana Kumariji, let me begin with your overview. Uh, you know, I think this is the cultural speciality of India, where we celebrate women as the divine in so many ways all throughout. But do you think we're still lagging behind in how we actually treat women in the real world? Well, Adhita, I'm very happy that, uh, sorry, uh, I'm very happy that you've selected this topic for today's discussion uh, because, uh, you know, two reasons. One, of course, is the time for reflection for all of us. Because, you know, when you celebrate women and when you are presenting women as someone who's you know, who's venerated, who's a goddess, and also with loud and very clear message we give to the world that, look, India's religion is the only one where we really worship goddess. The rest of the all religion are God, and, you know, men are the ones who are really uh, worshipped. But, you know, the most important thing is that, you know, what is our um, thought process in terms of how we look at women in the social reality and how we treat our women and how we really venerate women in terms of our uh, understanding of uh, goddess. It, there is a huge, huge gap between the two things. You know, some level of hypocrisy is there, some level of, uh, you know, this, uh, what, I don't want to call it fake thinking, but I want to certainly say something more stronger than that, that we really fool ourselves by saying that we are worshipping goddesses and our culture has goddesses. And then, you know, when it comes to treating women in our personal life, in our family life, in society, then, you know, there are more than proof enough to say that we don't treat our women well. And, and I can just say that, you know, some data that 15% cases of violence increase in 2021 against women. You know, rape cases have increased almost by one and a half times more. And when you look at dowry deaths, killing women, I mean, so, you know, it's it's about, uh, you know, almost, uh, you can say easily that 6,589 girls were killed for want of dowry, killed, murdered, you know? And also besides that, that's a separate thing, that's how, how much violence is inflicted on women. Look at every which way. Do we give our women enough opportunities for education? Are we treating them equal in terms of employment? Are we really bringing them at par with men in terms of sharing power in parliament? We are not. We just only use them as almost like goddesses, are ornamentals, you know, putting them there, worshipping them, you know, saying that this is what our culture is all about. But it's not. It's not about respecting women as equal human beings. Just like we have constitution. Constitution is like our religion, you know, and, and then so many guarantees have been given to women in the constitution. But when you look at reality, are we even really even treated as an equal citizen? I don't think so. Mm. I don't think social values, norms, political, uh, you know, um, uh, perception about women or political decisions about women really do not 
treat women as equal. And, and that is the reason you see Indian women lag behind. Just one last example I want to give you globally. When you look at any report, any report which is globally perceiving, looking at how countries are doing, India falls always in the bottom of 20s nations that will be somewhere like 148th, 135th, whether it is World Development Report, whether it is, you know, the whole, uh, any, any report that you want to look at. So why? Because our women are far behind. Our women, health, education, employment, every which way women are far behind. So, you know, what is the point? What is the point saying, oh, today is I mean, mm. on a day of Naomi, I'm ha, saying, ha. I'm Durga. I don't want to be Durga. Women don't want to be Durgas. We want to be normal human beings treated with respect, dignity, and also with equality. You know, um, we're talking about equality, and uh, Ranjana Kumari ji gave some data. I want to add to that is the, and this is an important part of data, um, the participation of women in the labor force that is the total number of people who have work or are looking for work above the age of 15 and this is official data that's put out every year in 2021 the participation of women increased increased to 25.1 percent after that increase is just 25.1 percent and to put this in perspective uh, the countries of Bangladesh have 35% of female labor participation rate and 31% in Sri Lanka. Uh, to add more to it, in urban India, the participation of women in the labor force is even lesser at 18%. And I want to talk about this because um, Sashakti Karan, jisko hai, you know, actual empowerment comes from financial empowerment. And you need to go out and be financially dependent to really take a hold of your own destiny. Advaita uh, Kala, let me come to you on this part. Of course, we have um, a policy goal to increase the labor participation rate for women to, you know, 50% over the next few decades. But why do you think women are held back, especially in urban areas? This is not also about, you know, uh, uh, class or where you are in society or even education. It seems mm -hmm. to be a deeper issue. Absolutely. And I think uh, to bell the cat, we have to really talk about our society and our structures. You know, do uh, do they support women in the workforce? Or does a woman go out and work and then come back home and do all the housework, take care of the children, the in-laws, what have you, the social structures that need to be in place that need to aid a woman participating in work for, in the workforce, like men are aided in participating in the workforce by not having to worry about whether their home is running, or whether the maid has been paid, whether the food has been cooked. This kind of support, we hear this over and over anecdotally, and it's reflecting in the data as well, is just not available to women because even today, no matter a woman could be a you know a ceo although i must add there are very few female ceos as well so it's not only you know the daily wager but it's also the boardrooms of our country the so called liberated and uh, forward thinking sections and educated sections of, of society where also female participation post middle management is falling rapidly and in boardrooms they're practically non existent unless they've been born into a family that owns a company now these these are all realities that exist in our society and you're absolutely right it goes far beyond the class divide and it has to do with the fact that in our society we only treat a woman as whole and then it comes back to these symbols you know the devi the mother the daughter you know, always in relation to someone. There's nothing wrong with being all these things. There's nothing wrong with even being venerated, whether hypocritically or even genuinely by some people. The issue is that the reality of female experience in this country is still extremely challenging. And, you know, female security, because if women need to go out into the workplace, they have to feel safe. I come from Uttarakhand. We just had that Ankita Bhandari case. Yes. Where she went out to work and she were, were, worked in a BJP leader's uh, son's uh, hotel. And what, what came of her? Because she didn't go into prostitution, she lost her life. So if you're not able to provide basic security for women, 
how are they going to even step out of their home? Now, this Ankita Bandari case is going to be a reason why a lot of girls are not allowed to work. Zina Ji, I spoke about how things have improved but can go further. Can you give us some perspective of how things have also improved? Do you see a big change in the way uh, people are looking at their children who are girls. At least one thing I think I have noticed is more and more families are now very clear they want to educate their daughters. And that is, I think, a sea change. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, uh, first, thank you for inviting me to your show and happy Dasera to one and all thank of you. my co myself and to the viewers and my co-panelists. Uh, what I, what you're saying has a point, you see, because women have been right at the bottom, under the feet, and now they're coming up very gradually and very slowly. Uh, we do see uh, optimistic, uh, we see optimism in their rise, but, uh, but uh, one cannot deny the fact that there is still a very patriarchal international mindset up. You see, it's not only in India, but you see it all over the world. You see it globally that, you know, women are placed in a certain way. Now, for, the, for instance, how many women are really in the decision making process, whether it is an international decision, whether it's a political decision, whether it is a family decision, whether it is, a, you know, a, any kind of decision making anywhere. You have to learn around, turn around at your shoulder and look at the men. So mm. you, as, as far as, you know, our figures are concerned, yes, we are on the rise. But as far as our mindsets are concerned, you see, I, I, that, that is what, what is really bothering me is the mindset that we are getting into. And I would speak, say that, that uh, for the world also, but for us also, we have to look into this. Looking at the sexual harassment, the domestic violence, yes. you know, the pay gap between men and women. The, you know, even the eating disorders and, you know, the body uh, image, you know, the, the kind of, uh, if it's a woman, uh, 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 you know, you can't go to pubs, you're beaten up sometimes, you know, by certain groups. So, uh, what? Uh, and also, your reproductive rights. Fortunately, we've got, uh, you know, the Supreme Court has given us, uh, you know, that marital rape also uh, it, it has become a law, which is very a welcome law. Uh, but, you know, the, these reproductive rights were taken away even at the United States where a woman could not abort, you know, out of her own free will. So, you see, and also there are honor crimes even today which are committed. So, we are also part of this structure. And I think, you know, with India, especially when we talk of, you know, Nari Shakti, we talk of Sri Shakti, we talk of, uh, you know, women empowerment, we talk of Durga, uh, the, the strength of Durga. We have to understand that we have to become, in a way, uh, the role models also, a role model as a country to show how our women are being respected, given their full dignity, given a role in parliament. See, the last figures I saw of our women uh, in parliament, uh, according to the ECI, I think it was called uh, uh, the uh, Election Commission of India, uh, it is at 10.5%. So, you see, where is your voice? Yeah. And you see, women have become the voiceless. So what I feel is that as, a, you know, a very, a, a, as an upcoming superpower and as a growing nation and as an example that we are a multicultural, uh, you know, we have the legacy that very few people in the world enjoy. I think that this is a very much a part of, uh, you know, of our thinking and this, uh, uh, you know, the exercise of authority and power over our women. When you're silenced... You, you know, know I, I, the, the, the point about women's participation in the political sphere is very interesting specifically because over the last few years, women have emerged as a very strong voter base. Uh, a lot of, um, uh, you know, promises and policies are directed towards women voters. Women voters often make the difference between loss and failure for a politician. But are they being truly represented? Ranjana ji, what do you think are the changes we should make? Because, you know, we're talking in general terms right now. But what would you like to see specifically changing with the acknowledgement uh, you know, like all the speakers were saying, that we have some of the best laws, whether it's, uh, you, you know, the ability for abortion, uh, whether it is uh, even uh, maternity leave benefits, some of the best rules in the world. 
it's about how they're actually implemented, isn't it? Yes, Tamanna. I think uh, when you were cautioning that, you know, let's not only really talk about where we have, uh, we don't, uh, you know, figure in terms of global or national or uh, data, but also uh, let's look at what really happened. I think, you know, a story of Durga, if you go by mythology, emergence of Durga herself was that, you know, she had to kill the demon and all the God who had lost their power, which you see today in politics, you know, a lot of these men around who are not able to really deliver, then they created Durga, the, then of course Durga was created, Brahma created Durga, and then they all empowered her. But, you know, today's, I, I you asked me about my wish. I think, you know, of course the wish list is so long and, you know, 40 years of life struggling for women empowerment uh, makes me feel that uh, we, I mean, I'm optimist, I'm optimist, but, you know, certain things will have to be done you know, we have had enough of these, you know, talking about it and lots of announcements and lots of pronouncements and saying things about women and everybody talks about women's empowerment in today's day and age because we, they know it is politically correct. And also, I mean, we can't ignore the fact that we have a president woman um, uh, and we have also some ministers who are women. We also have Panchayati Raj women. And as you rightly said, women have the power to vote today. And they're making and breaking the government and much more so in future, women are going to exercise that power and authority. But at the same time, can't parliament today, who and also the ruling party who has the majority, pass the bill to give women equal right to get represented in the parliament? Can't they do it? I mean, if the real genuine uh, empowerment has to happen, and you really think that, you know, this is the country where we uh, worship goddesses, then why can't we do this much to empower women? Give one of the power. The other power is to why can't we say that every single corporate, every single agency, every single employer will have to ensure that at least 50% women are there. Okay, I'd rather no your, your, your view on, on this point, that we need affirmative action. We need <laughs> actual affirmative action. Not just naras, not just government schemes, or, you know, um, PSAs, we need actual affirmative action, give women space. And this is, by the way, happening in some of the top companies in the world, where when these companies go to their shareholders, they have to explain how many women do they have on their board of directors? What is the kind of gender diversity they have in the workplace? And of course, diversity of all kinds. Do you think we need that in India? Or this is the wrong time to impose one more condition on anyone trying to run a business? Well, you know, I mean, there's there's the political side of it and there's the corporate side of it. Now, uh, companies are already looking for reasons not to hire women. So the moment you bring up something about maternity leaves or compulsory cre uh, creches, uh, you'll, f you'll find a lot of blowback because guess what? Most companies are run by men. So this is the reality that we live in. Now, Rajana Ji has been the, in this field for decades, and I'm very happy to hear she's feeling optimistic because I haven't been lately. So it, it, it makes me feel better that there is something to be optimistic about. But I really don't think anybody is going to give us reservations, Ranjana ma'am, in, uh, in parliament. You see, even the women in parliament across party lines, they can't come together and demand it and put up some sort of protest. This is something that women have to organize for and demand. Because if we are a vote block when it comes to elections, and we are pandered to in those six months before an election, then we have to exercise that power also. Not just be sitting there for the free saris and the free gas and say, Chali, theke, I'll vote for you because of this. We have to really go out there and organize ourselves and say that we demand representation in parliament because nobody is going to give it to us. And trust me, the politicians know. I mean, I studied Mission Shakti in UP and it had a direct impact on uh, Yogi Adityanath getting re-elected. So it's not that we don't, or, or for that matter, the Ujwala Yojana in 2019. Yes. It had an impact. So we know this for a fact. But I think we are also laid back. We also don't organize ourselves. Those of us who are in positions of power don't organize themselves either. So <laughs> this is an issue. We are going to have to demand it. No one's going to give I us think, reservations. I think, you know, let's let's be honest. If you're being really honest here and we're, uh, this is a conversation between all women who 
at least find themselves empowered. If you have to choose between your identity as a woman or say a member of your political party or a member of your you know, organization or a member of your family, you're going to put all of those identities first. Yes. Because there, there'll be a backlash to putting your own identity as a woman in the forefront. Bhavna ji, you want to come in on this? Oh, this is a very tricky question, I must say. <laughs> this is really tricky. Uh, uh, no, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example yeah, of what I'm guess. saying. If I made it yes, convoluted. Most of us would you, do you, that. You, you are... Uh, you know, you're an actor, you've been on so many projects. Would you find it risky to identify yourself first as a woman and ask for rights of other women on your set rather than be a part of your team, which includes men, which includes the director who might be a man and the more powerful parts of that team? It's a dilemma we all face every day. Yes. I know it, it. It yes, it does. It does put us in a dilemma in such uh, circumstances. You know, your heart will be really crying for the other women, though you can really see through it. But then, actually, really bold in a bold manner, you come and fight for them and ask for their rights or what is happening. You know, you just look for to correct the scenario. It does put us in a dilemma. It is not so easy as and you just come out and then say that yes, I'm a woman too, and then I can really stand for her. It is something that every woman will have to do that at every stage in our life. That is true. That is true. I don't think all of us are doing it. I don't think. I don't yeah. think. I have done it maybe a few times. But then we, there will be a small hitch. There will be a small hesitation, you know. Because you don't want to lose out your own, uh, whatever the position that you have created for yourself in the society. Just for like any other men too. Like the way they have created their own. Uh, aura and then their own uh, status in the society probably we we don't want to lose out our position also so that fear will also also be there and i think it's it's behind every woman's uh, yeah i'm mind, glad I'm you're sure. speaking about I'm this sure. frankly I, I will probably confess i'm glad here, you're yes. speaking about this frankly yes. because you know speaking out for other women sometimes you know you get branded as a feminist which is a, apparently yeah. a bad thing now you have to hit that backlash you also True. have to work with the other side the, these are now True. real life circumstances. Uh, you know, as, as, as we wrap up though, Dr. Zenath, I'm glad we sure. got you back on the program. Just your outlook for the future. What would you like to see change to empower India's women more and to unlock the Nari Shakti that we undoubtedly have? I think the first thing we have to clear the patriarchal mindset and the understanding, the misogynistic understanding that women can do this and can only get that far. You see, that, mm. that kind of uh, a, a respect for women's intelligence, for their ability, for their capability must come in. Also, you see, when we you asked the previous question, it has much to do with people. You see, when we consider ourselves as human beings, then we are also women and we are, we are also human beings, but you're also men and you're also human beings. But where the discrimination comes in, there should be no discrimination. There should be a line cutting through. And I think, uh, you know, though it is extremely difficult to say what I'm going on to say, you see, we have to now ask every party in their manifesto to put in, you know, what they are going to, uh, how, or what empowerment they're going to give women. We, uh, you know, the, uh, it's very nice to say women are very good and very wonderful and, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z. But what we need actually is uh, is uh, is an understanding of what you're going to give us there. Are you going to give us those political rights which we which will empower us and which will help <laughs> us to uh, to take an overall view of what is happening in in our country as people. You see, not women centric, not feminist centric, not male centric, but people. But today it is a male centric society. So we cannot we cannot overlook that factor. At the same time, you see, women we we take all as a whole, but never lose our identity. I think a woman's identity is beautiful. It is uh, it is a very uh, it is a self image. I mm. think you see. I feel that every time you look at yourself in the mirror, you have to say that I am. This is who I am, and this yes. is who I will always be. And I'm part of this uh, of my country. I'm part of a civilization. I'm, I'm a very important part as a contributor 
to everything that has happened. And lift and others I, around I, I, you. I, I, Important to take everyone else with you and lift others around you. I have to wrap this up, but I want to thank all of you for joining us on this special program today as we celebrate festivities around the, around the country with the hope, of course, of a brighter and better future.